three, two, one. Hi everyone, welcome back to another History Live interview. Tonight, I have a guest who has been making waves online with her in-depth investigations into ancient mysteries and history. She is the creator of History with Kaylee. Uh, so, hi, Kaylee During. Hi. <laughs> good evening. How are you doing tonight, Kaylee? I'm good. How are you? I am great, thanks. Thank you so much for chatting to us tonight. Of course. You know, we, we all watch your, your videos on, on YouTube. Um, and, you know, we, we get to know a little bit of your life, but I want people to know you a bit better. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. So uh, before we started the call, I, I met your sister, um, who is mm -hmm. actually a paleontologist. Yes, she is. Yeah, did she have any influence on what you went into, your interest with history? Not really. I, uh, I've always loved history a lot. In high school, it was my second best course. Yeah. And uh, like I, I always got straight A's. I loved history. Even when we got the textbook and we like skipped over huge sections of it, I, in my free and spare time, I would always just skim through the pages and read everything because I just wanted to know everything that was in the books. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as a young child, I always like, skimmed through the encycl uh, encyclopedias in my mom's house. I loved history from a young age and I found the passion again last year. And ever since I've been creating videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how did, you, how did you rediscover the passion for, for history? Um, I started watching the TV show called Outlander where the woman travels through the stones back in time. And the stone circle, just, I don't know, it did something with me, it awoken something in me, and then I questioned, is there a real stone circle like that? And I found it at um, a, colon a colonish in the Isle of Harris and Lewis in Scotland. And I started to research that place, and I found this extensive um, excavation survey of like 400 pages long, and I kept reading it. And then I decided I need to create a video about this place. And so I turned that into a video. I've now since deleted that video because the background music was way too loud and the quality just isn't up to par compared to my other videos. So I will recreate it in the future. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I made one video and then I, I was hooked. Yeah. I was absolutely hooked. I needed to make more. Yeah, it's so much fun. But it's interesting you say you deleted that. You know, I've had that kind of feeling with some videos where I go, hmm, I made this video when I was like 14, 15. Should I delete yeah. it? Because it's a bit like, at, when you at see first, it. At first, I had unlisted it for like six months. So you could only find it through the playlist. Mm -hmm. And even then there were people like commenting, oh, the background music is way too loud. This is not your standard. And then I was like, okay, just go away with it. Just bye. I'll do you again in the future. <laughs> Yeah, I'll make totally. sure it's like up to par because it, it wasn't good video. enough. Yeah, Re redo that video. I want to. See I will. That. Yeah, yeah, because the, the 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 place of Kalanish, um, the location plus it's just not one stone circle. Mm -hmm. It's like the standing stones of Kalanish, and then you have like more Kalanish sites on the same island, and they're scattered, and it's it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Would you say that your, your sister, has she helped you at all with researching videos or anything like that? Um, there was one site that was um, a Carol Moore in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And there was a Swedish archaeologist who uh, was the head of the excavation team. And I asked my sister if she could maybe like find some files and uh, papers for me because she works and lives in Sweden. And through her Swedish university, she might have access, access to some files that I couldn't find. And she indeed found some and she sent them my way. And beyond that, um, I never really asked for help. I have made one paleontology somewhat maybe, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I made one video about the evolution of whales because I covered Wadi Al-Hitan in Egypt, the yes. whales in the desert. 
and I did not ask for her help and I skimmed over like um, I may, maybe simplified it too much but she she wasn't mad she, she <laughs> I didn't mess it up completely she said she <laughs> it's okay it's okay <laughs> She just did a heart. I should be fine. Camera. Yes, exactly. I should be fine. <laughs> That's it's approved. It's approved. Yeah, it's approved. It's approved. It wasn't perfect, but it's approved. It was good enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when you make these videos, you have to sort of simplify the information because if it's too yeah. advanced, the audience is not going to be able to follow very well. Definitely. Yeah. So, on average, how long does it take you to make like? one video you know from concept from concept to publishing walk me through your process it depends on the video for which playlist i create if it's a structure video it can take between a week and a half to like a month and a half and in between i will work on other content and it's like if it's like uh, the new playlist the ancient inventions i can have a video out in like three days start to finish the idea, the script writing, the filming and the editing, I can have it completely done in three days. And I'm maybe doing some interviews in the future where I will interview um, or conduct interviews with like paleontologists, uh, anthropologists, archeologists. I'm really excited to give a spot to the professionals, and just let them speak about their passion. Because mm -hmm. I, I interviewed uh, Per Alberg, Professor Per Alberg from the Uppsala University about the footprints that were discovered in Crete, the oldest pre-human footprints that mm -hmm. were found, 6.05 million years old. It's incredible. And the interview I had with they? I have no idea. I, I, I would have to ask him. But not 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 massive, at least <laughs> smaller than ours, I think. But the the knowledge he had and the way he spoke, it was way too interesting for me to like cut anything out. And I just kept the interview as is. I only cut out the parts where he was just like looking for something or like we were just discussing outside of the interview, uh, things like that. But I love doing that. The, um, the spotlight on the professionals. I think we need to do that more in this um, history niche on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I'm like doing these these interviews yeah. well, to, to, give, <laughs> to give them a platform because a lot yes. of them, they do very good work and, you know, they don't get some of them don't get recognized by by like TV shows or things like that. Yeah, so it's interesting to hear what they doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and it, I mean, the knowledge they share is incredible mm -hmm. you don't find that in a book exactly because exactly. it's passionate it's, it comes from a place of passion yeah yeah and yeah. you know sometimes they if they do appear in documentaries on tv and stuff like that those documentaries they get edited and sometimes they yeah. get edited in a way where they'll say something but it's not exactly what they were saying so <laughs> by interviewing them giving them this longer way of explaining things um, yeah you know it it gets their message across yeah 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 it's like the tv shows it's usually like 30 seconds you see a professional and then they go over to like something else and then oh hey 20 seconds of a professional and they go over to something else like no i would just i want to hear from the archaeologists on site keep talking just don't cut it just yeah. please <laughs> yeah like we don't have to over dramatize yeah I, I think it's a shame that everything has to be like a show nowadays the, yeah. because the real story, the real history, just like ancient aliens and stuff, like the real thing is much more interesting to me than the facade of, oh, this could be. I don't care about what could be. I, I care about what is. Yeah. What do we factually know? What can we prove beyond the reason of doubt? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like I was talking to, to Kara Cooney and I know that she was also edited in one of her documentaries and we know she loves giving good explanations, good facts. Yeah. And she, she said something like, oh, it would be great to, to think that everyone um, accepted Hatshepsut as a female pharaoh and they cut her right there Yep. on the TV show and she had a whole section after that where she actually explained 
but that couldn't have happened. And now yeah. it looked like, oh, she says she was accepted. Yeah. So, yeah, I follow Kara Cooney as well. I love, I love her memes. <laughs> <laughs> some, of them, some of them are a bit rough, but... Uh, I, I do love them. <laughs> <laughs> So where do you get your, your main inspiration, your, your ideas for your videos from? Um, well, when I started making the first couple videos, I started compiling lists of things that I'm intrigued by and like structures, monuments, locations, people that I'm intrigued by. And I currently have multiple playlists. I think I have five or six right now. And for every playlist, I have at least between 10 and 40 ideas currently. So like for the next two, three, maybe four years, I think I'm covered. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, because I, I, I scroll through the Internet. There's a new discovery. Well, that's a video. And then I'm not even touching my lists mm -hmm. because like new discovery, they just happen. And sometimes when you just like, you, you read about a new discovery and they mention a site or they mention a person or a culture and then that that gets added to a list or there's a myth or a folklore or a legend and that gets added to a list and exactly. things you like that. Exactly, you start going down that spiral. Yes, I go through a rabbit hole every time I, I read a news article. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you'll, you'll read to... a name and you'll go, yeah. who is yeah. that? And then you yep. research everything about them. And... <laughs> And like, eventually you end up with way too much stuff to cover. Yes. <laughs> yes. But that's good because history is never ending. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember I was writing an essay last year and there was something in there about one of the Ptolemies and I started researching and then I ended up spending two days researching something that was not even connected. It was like to do with the temple of Isis at Pompeii and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, Oh, wait, I got to get back to what I was working on. <laughs> I love this. Like, you can just lose yourself in a rabbit hole of just, it has nothing to do with anything. You just want to know more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that intrigue comes <clears throat> from for you to want to know more? I've always had that as like a young kid. I always ask the questions that other kids didn't ask. Plus, like, I, 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 on like a play party with other kids, I would usually hang out with the parents and just ask them a load of questions instead of like playing with the kids because yeah, play time, you can do that every time. But like asking a parent, what do you do for a job? <laughs> that was much more interesting to me. And yeah, I, I think it has to do with like the encyclopedias I used to skim through mm -hmm. because there's a lot of information in that. And you just keep every... Every page is more information. So you just keep wanting to know more. I think that fueled it. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the 90s um, encyclopedias, like the digital encyclopedias? Yeah, I didn't like them. I, I, I like the actual books and the you pages. Like the books. Yeah. Because yeah, they had some yeah. interesting, like you could do like virtual tours of some place. It was really interesting. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back in the 90s. So oh. that's what I was doing. <laughs> 90s were a, a great time. <laughs> yeah, I was like six, I think, five or six. Yeah. 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 So what topic did you find to be the most challenging to present? I think the Queens, the, the Queens playlist that I cover, because there like with Hatshepsut, you can find information, but even then it's like it's still hard to come by. Mm -hmm. But like when you go and you speak about Nefertari or even the other queens, it's like it's really difficult to find good information about them. Mm -hmm. The pharaohs were covered in depth and the queens, yeah. I mean, Nefertari had her tomb, which tells us a lot, thankfully. But beyond that, there isn't much known. Yeah. And to me, that's a shame, but that's also the reason why I started doing that playlist because I want to shine a light on the important women throughout history, starting mm -hmm. with Egypt, but I will eventually like cover other queens from different cultures and continents. Yeah, I, th I think it's important for us to show that women throughout history have been really important. Mm -hmm. And 
they've been overshadowed by men and by the men we know you're you're amazing just like step aside it's time for the queens but that's difficult because i also don't want to come across as if um the men weren't important you know what i mean yeah so yeah it's a fine line i i i'm walking with that playlist you got to find the right balance for sure yes for sure yeah but you know it's so interesting you're talking about finding the right information about like Hatshepsut and Nefertari and things like that because I find sometimes that you know most of these books were written you know in the 1900s 1800s um, where all the all the academics were these stuffy old men and it's written from their point of view yeah so you know, when you research, do you also find that sometimes, well, that's a little out of date and you look at it with fresh eyes and you can present it with a new, <clears throat> yeah. a new twist? Yeah, definitely. Just like with Hatshepsut, everyone just assumes that her stepson, Tutmosis the third, is, yes. yes, okay, like, but my brain is a bit fried at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> but like everyone just assumes that it was her stepson who destroyed everything that reminded him of her. When in fact, it wasn't him, but it was his son who mm -hmm. did that. It, he actually accepted her as she was. She was the queen. She took over the throne. She made sure that the royal line and the lineage was as is. Because otherwise, he might have never become pharaoh or yeah. became pharaoh. So he knew that she stepped in to like probably save the lineage. And when she died... He even like at the, um, I think it was the Red Chapel in Karnak. He even had the depiction of her with him built there yeah. and constructed there after she already had died. So no, of course, he wouldn't have destroyed anything reminding him of her because he actually honored her after yeah. her death. Yeah. But in every those, book. Yeah, a lot of those uh, old books she's written as the evil stepmother. And yeah, like, she wasn't. She saved the lineage. She made sure that he was able to still become Pharaoh, just like her husband mm -hmm. wanted. Yeah. 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 And, you know, she was from royal birth, so she had every yeah. right to be. Of course. Yeah. And who says a female can't rule? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had examples before in the suit. So exactly. Things yeah. are changing. Yeah. I'm currently investigating Kent Kawes as a, as a side. So um, I know I spoke to another Egyptologist the other day and was like, oh, she was not a pharaoh. But it's under investigation. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we know that you have a, a little bit of a, a brief time where you studied architecture. Yes. Does that influence your work at all now? Definitely. Yes, yes. Um, when I started doing this, um, it was like combining my two passions, structures, like the architecture mm -hmm. and the history. So I wanted to look into the oldest structures, the oldest yeah. forms of architecture. And that's why the um, ancient structure playlist is definitely my personal passion project. Mm -hmm. I don't make videos in there too often nowadays, yeah. because I know that they're very niche and not everyone enjoys them mm -hmm. per se. It's just that I love doing it so that every once, a, uh, every once a month or six weeks, I try to make at least one video in that playlist because yeah, I just need to do my passion. Exactly. Yeah. You have to do what you enjoy. Yeah. Personally, I'm not like, you know, people tell me, oh, the stones were so big and they were so wide and they were so high. And I'm like, okay, but tell me about who cut the stone. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's like when, when I look at like at the, um, the mound structures in Ireland, mm -hmm. the, the like Newgrange and Noth, they're just way too amazing for me to like skim over certain details because mm -hmm. I want to know the details. How heavy were the stones? How big were they? Um, why did they place them in such a way that with Newgrange that on um, the winter solstice, the sun lights up the inner chamber that's like 19 meters deep into that mound. Mm -hmm. It's insanity because they constructed it in such a way that that happened. You need advanced knowledge for that. You have and to with, watch the stars and know what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. But I think that some people misunderstand advanced knowledge for 
technological advanced mm -hmm. because being advancedly knowledge uh, knowledgeable about like the stars and the way the earth spins around this or, or yeah like if you really look at it from an ancient perspective they had the time the means and they wanted to research how everything around them worked mm -hmm. and they did that in such a way that we can't fathom because we don't have that time yeah. we're we're busy we need to go to work we need to go to bed we need to feed the kids like all things like that just takes away from your personal growth and they yeah. had that yeah. and because of that they were advanced in a way that we can't fathom in modern times because we we have electricity we have smartphones all of this this does everything for me it's a computer like and i don't need to think, think. Hmm. i oh i want to go there i'll just Google Maps it, you know, I'll, I, I get there. We don't know how we get there, but we get there. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you have no idea how to get there, but like it tells me exactly what, what I need to do. And that's, I think, the difference. We can't fathom in modern times how advanced they were. So no, then you get people that say aliens built Stonehenge. No, they didn't. Humans did in a way that you just can't imagine because you have no idea how advanced they were. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. they, they were also a lot more connected to their surroundings. Unlike us, we're connected to our phones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 In, instinctual knowledge that we don't have anymore, yeah. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the ancient Egyptians looking, you know, they'll see a crocodile and they'll go, okay, well, we can see these characteristics. Let's depict him as this god. So that yeah. doesn't specifically mean that there was a half man, half crocodile walking around. Exactly, exactly. It was the, the elements yes. that some of us don't see today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but we're gonna get, we're gonna get a little bit uh, deeper with this conversation. Um, so, you know, not many people know this about you, Katie, but you and I have discussed, you know, you, you did have a, a time where you struggled a lot with depression. Yes. Um, would you be willing to share how you got out of that? Sure. It, it started when I had a tailbone removal surgery in 2012. And that really uh, left a very harsh impact on my life. My world became really small. I was not really able to leave the house or leave a bed. And for the first few years that, yeah, that made me really depressed. And eventually, yeah, be after the body started to like recover, I found out that my mind was starting to recover as well. Because, hey, I could do this that I couldn't do a year ago. So that made me feel better. And you grow from that. You keep doing more. You keep trying more. And it's, of course, I've had setbacks. But yeah, I think knowing that in the end, that surgery was needed for me to have a good future mm -hmm. eventually pulled me through. Yeah. 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 You know, the mind is a very powerful thing. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I went, like when I when I spoke to um, Lady Carnarvon when I interviewed her, she was telling me about um, Lady Almina um, from Highclere Castle, mm -hmm. and when when they converted the castle into a, a hospital, like a rehab center for people from the war, for the soldiers from the war she didn't go in there with an attitude she was also you know acting as a nurse she didn't go in there with an attitude of oh i'm so sorry for you you'll you'll feel better you'll get better she went in there and it's like okay hey um you're gonna be fine do you want to do you want a whiskey let's get you out of bed let's go walking around let's do something you know get yeah. the brain and the mind on a positive route yeah. yeah yeah for me it was a uh, years of watching tv shows and just distracting yourself from what you don't want to feel and eventually just feeling it all and just letting it be yeah 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 i watched um another youtuber the other day who was talking about um depression as well and uh, she was saying that don't play sad music 
and um, listen to happy music that uplifts you and things like that. And I thought, well, that's complete. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, you know, if you want to listen to a song that's going to make you cry, you cry, you get it out of your system, you feel better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, but, you know, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, I hope that from your experience, maybe people will, will learn to, to train the mind to, to feel better. It's, it's good to remind yourself that nothing ever stays the same. Mm -hmm. So when you're depressed, you won't feel depressed forever because nothing stays the same forever. Mm -hmm. Everything's changing. Like a year ago, I was a completely different person that I am today. Mm -hmm. And especially after like the past couple, three-ish weeks I've had, a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to cope with that. And right now I'm sitting here and it's hard and it's difficult, but I'm okay. And whatever happens, I will be okay. Mm -hmm. It's the knowledge and the, the faith I have in myself to know that whatever life throws at me right now, I can handle it. I will keep my chin up and I'll keep going. And yeah. that's really a good thing for me. Yeah, well, just keep that up. Keep that up, Katie, because you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I will. So, growing up in the Netherlands, was there history around you a lot to spark your interests? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, the town I live in is built, uh, made up of four parts. The oldest part is more than a thousand years old. And the part wow. I live in is the youngest part. And this is nearly 950 years old. There's a lot of history in this town. There's a lot of history in our nearest city of Alkmaar. It's the cheese city of the Netherlands. Um, Alkmaar was the first city that um, won the siege over the Spanish during the 80 years war. And the reason that we in the Netherlands eventually gained our independence as the very first country to declare our independence. So that is also like history really close to you. Yeah. And then just the, the history of the Netherlands itself. Mm -hmm. It's to me, it's always been fascinating. So yeah, the history all around me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you know, the, the Netherlands are obviously, you know, connected with South Africa. Yes. Um, so, yes. you know, we studied a little bit of, of the history of the Netherlands and we studied, you know, a little bit of, um, we did Dutch at school. Yeah. <laughs> I know that we've typed uh, in South, you've typed in South African to me once and I typed in Dutch back and like, we, it, it's not the same, but similar enough to know what the other person is typing. Yes. Exactly. For sure. Exactly. <laughs> other friends from the Netherlands and I'm like, they can speak to me in Dutch. And I'm like, okay, I understand exactly what you're saying. I reply in Afrikaans, they understand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, not even the same. It, the language is like Afrikaans is more like the old Dutch. Mm -hmm. And like we speak modern Dutch, but the similarities are just similar enough that even when you don't know one or two words in a sentence, you can still understand what the other person means. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We, Plus, I love the sound of South African. Oh, I love the sound of it, Afrikaans. <laughs> no. Yes, I like it. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's a lot more fun than, okay, like, I don't like Belgian. The Belgian language, when they speak um, uh, Flemish, I don't like it. Like, it's, it sounds like Dutch by a five-year-old. But South Afrikaans, oh, it's, oh, I love it. It's yeah. just a little, it's a, it has a little bit of spice. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. But we use a lot of, you know, the... <laughs> yeah, we have the a lot as well. So yeah, I'm used to that. Yeah. The Belgians, they do the soft G, like my uh, brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> my sister is laughing like, mm -hmm. he does the soft G because he's from Brabant. Like the, South Germans, the Germans use a very soft G. It's almost like a yeah so Certainly. when i was learning german i kept going and you're like no <laughs> i tried to learn german in high school i failed miserably multiple years i gave up <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, yeah. like I, I've always said like German and Dutch and Afrikaans, they are quite similar. Yeah. Um, a lot of German people are like, oh, it's nothing like that, but you can hear some of the words that are yeah. so similar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Nico is learning, he has to perform an opera piece um, in Afrikaans of all languages. <laughs> Is he lucky that he's with you? <laughs> yeah, so I was helping him learn some of the words and I was like saying it in like <laughs> and he was like, what? I always make oh, I always make the joke that for English or American speaking people, if you want to like speak Dutch or Afrikaans, um, the G is like a choking growl. <laughs> I don't know how to how to explain it otherwise, like goeiemorgen. How do you yeah. explain the g? <laughs> it's like it's a choking growl like that's the sound you want to hear and feel in your throat then you're doing it right if it hurts you're doing it perfect yeah it's like who, who gaat it? it's like who gaat it? yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> it's terrible we were stuck we were stuck for years watching um the only way we could watch eurovision in south africa was on dutch tv mm. so all the commentating was in dutch yeah and that was like intense it, it's intense yes definitely i had they um, over the singers yeah they speak over the singers it's very annoying i i dislike the dutch commentary during eurovision so what i do is i currently watch it through youtube because then i don't hear them <laughs> <laughs> i had an english friend who came to the netherlands a couple of years ago and she was here for like two weeks and she tried to like speak Dutch. And uh, yeah, she went with a throat uh, pastillas back home because her throat was hurting so much from the I <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> but you did it right. Like stay here for a month. Your throat doesn't hurt anymore. It would be perfect. <laughs> so, you know, going from the, the Dutch civilization, um, is, is Egypt your favorite civilization to study? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 It's just the 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 length of their history, how mm -hmm. far it goes back and the amazing monuments that were created, the their beliefs, their religion, it's just it has everything you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's also I find it's complex, but it's also got a linear way yeah. of following it. Yeah. 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 And once you get into it, you can't stop. Exactly. <laughs> it's worse. It's worse than like alcohol or drugs or anything like that. Agreed. Just, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> which, you know, I know you've been to, to Egypt a couple times. Yeah. Twice. Which, which site did you enjoy the most? I did not visit any site, <gasps> which is blasphemous. I know. I know. The first time I went in 2018, which was also the very first time I left the Netherlands by plane, my first time flying. And my dad was, um, yeah, he didn't like it that I went there. <laughs> so he was like, you stay on the resort. So I promised. And I'm that terrible person that never, ever breaks a promise. Right. So uh, I stayed at the resort. And a year later, in 2019, we went again, and he again made me promise. And I did, when I came back in 2019, I did tell him, I'm never going to make you such promises again, because I hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm never, next time I'm going to Egypt, I want to see everything. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, come, with, come with me next year. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I really want to go back. I miss Egypt. I miss the heat on my skin. Oh, I, I, I went to the, I, we did do like one desert safari, like very sneakily. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I stood in the desert with like 54 degrees Celsius, <gasps> burning sun on my skin. And it was like, oh, I'm home. Hell. <laughs> it's like, I, I loved the heat on my skin. It was perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not so much the, a fan of the heat, so I prefer to go. You know, I'm in, from in the seasons, Netherlands. Oh no. It's gray, it's cold, it's wet, it's ill. <laughs> you go to Egypt and it's like sunny every day. Blue skies, perfect. I'm home. It rains once a year compared to one day of sunny year in the Netherlands. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for me, it's not really about the heat, it's about it just has a special feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I've I was I, I I've never been to another country in 2018 and I just I left the airport in Hurghada and like the first moment, the first step I took and the warmth on my skin, I just knew I'm home. Yeah. I couldn't explain it, but I feel more at home in Egypt than I feel in the Netherlands. And I've lived here my entire life. Yeah. So, so that to me, say that. You know, Egypt is just special. It has this really, you go there and you just feel like you're connected. It's yeah. strange. Yeah. Do you think the Egyptians would have appreciated or even understood our fascination with them? I think they would, because they did not document it just because they, eh, you know, eh. they happened. loved their own history. <laughs> they loved their own lives. They loved their culture. And so I think they would be very honored with the fascination that we have for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, it's like people also say when, when the mummies are on display um, or people enter into the tombs as tourists, um, yes, it is a sacred site. It was a resting place. Yeah. But on the other hand, we're going into these places, saying their names, reading what's on the walls. Yeah. And it's Instead like... Instead of them being forgotten, yeah. they are remembered in a way that they will live on. Yeah. So the afterlife, even if their version of an afterlife did not exist, they still live on because mm -hmm. we research them and we yeah. visit their places. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what their goal was, was to yeah. be remembered. Yeah. Remembered. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what, what subject in ancient Egypt do you think needs more investigation? The lives of like the normal Egyptians, mm -hmm. like the common folk, definitely. Mm -hmm. We know all about the pharaohs and we know all about like the queens and like what there is to know. But like, how was it for the common folk, the workers? Like I'm intrigued by that because when you look at modern times, we have more workers than we have like kings, queens, presidents, uh, prime ministers, whatever. So yeah. like the common folk, I think we connect with the common folk more than the people high up, the priests yeah. and such. It would be nice to know what like mm. a normal person who worked at, let's say, Deir al Medina digging yeah. tombs for the pharaohs, what did they actually think about the pharaoh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what was their I hated opinion? him. <laughs> I hated <Because> him. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't all just love the pharaoh. I'm sure yeah. they, it's like presidents today. It's like, oh, yes, I like him. No, I don't like him. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure they had that. They're people. Yeah, exactly. People have opinions. <laughs> yeah. Did you expect your YouTube channel to become so successful? No, no, <laughs> no, definitely not. No, in um, July, I was happy because I broke 3,800 subscribers. And then um, the person behind the channel, Ancient Architects, contacted me. And he told me, I wanted to shout you out because you, you do good, good work on YouTube. And I was like, yeah, you sure? Because like, I'm tiny, I'm a blip. No, no, I want to do it. And then he made a video and shouted me out. And then I grew to, um, like, what was it? I, I grew 2,400 subs in like two weeks. And I was amazed. And I was like, whoa, this is going fast now. <laughs> Lo and behold, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I made a video about ancient air conditioning and um, that started to live a life on its own. And then everything blew up. And uh, yeah, no, never expected that. Not in a million years. <laughs> it's, it's just weird. When YouTube wants to push that video up, they will do it. And it was so strange to me because I just made it very quickly in a rush. Mm -hmm. The editing is like, eh, I speak way too fast in that video compared to my other videos, 
I made it, I uploaded it. And the first thing I, I said was, this is one of my worst videos I've ever made. And it blew up to half a million views. And I'm like, how? Why that one? Why not one of the good ones? Damn it. Yeah, that's the thing. You work so hard on certain yeah. videos and it yeah. gets a couple thousand. And then the one you just like, okay, done. That's it's, the one. It has no rhyme or reason. And the only thing I'm, I was really happy with is that I already had more than 50 videos on the channel. Mm -hmm. all about history and the people that found me through the ancient air conditioning video did watch other videos so that did trickle down to like the rest of the channel and uh i was really happy with that because if that had happened like a year ago mm -hmm. i would have only had like maybe six videos or seven or eight that's yeah. not enough that's not a library for people to look at yeah. then it would do it would have been a wave and a complete crash. And now it was like a wave that went on for like three weeks and then eventually decided like, okay, now we're done. Cause like now I'm like, the wave's completely done. The views, everything is just back to normal, like slightly higher than it was before. But yeah, now it's like establishing a new baseline and see what these new subs do. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You just gotta go with it. Yeah, plus I will keep making videos because I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember when you when you first started your channel, like we would watch a video, and then it would be like a few days later, like where why hasn't she released another video? And then a, the new video would come, like okay, let's watch. So <laughs> yeah, now I I am trying to ramp up my uh, video speed. Like I'm trying to release one or two a week. It won't happen every week, but like that's my goal: one or two videos a week. Because yeah. one is the, the I, I need to at least upload once a week, mm -hmm. but preferably more often, especially in like the end of the year. I want to, I have a goal and I'm never going to get it, but it's 50,000 subs at the end of the year. It's not going to happen, but I will try. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You, have you to never know. Loud. Yeah. 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 My yeah. goal is to eventually at some point get to that 100,000 subscribers and get the plaque. Yeah. Oh, I, I want the plaque. But first, mm -hmm. I want to get half of that, like 50,000, preferably by New Year's Eve. People subscribe. No, just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll put our I'll put our, um, our channels <laughs> both at the end there and everyone can yes. subscribe to both. Yeah. 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 Please do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a friend. She's she reached the 100,000 subscribers oh. and she received the, the YouTube plaque. Um, and she just showed it in the video like, oh, I received this. Thank you so much. It'll go over here. It's a big deal. Make some more deal out of it. Like I would show it in like different lighting. <laughs> I would make a whole documentary about it. Exactly. Receiving the plaque. It came in the mail. <laughs> Opening it and doing the whole thing. <laughs> Definitely. <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so who inspires your work? Um, that's difficult because for me, it's been uh, a bunch of people who are already on YouTube, you included. So, yeah, I oh. did watch your documentaries and I love them. So yeah. Thank um, you so much. I remember your comments from a while ago. So yes. <laughs> um, but like, um, for me, it's like an ancient architect, uh, Bright Insight. I've watched them for like years since. I like just discovered Bright Insight like two days ago. Wow. <laughs> no, I like Jimmy. He's a, he follows me on Instagram since like last year. It was really funny. But yeah, no, just and like history itself inspires me. Just when I look at like a country like Ireland and you look at their burial mounds and their dolmens and hench monuments, and everything. And then they have like these fairy forts or fairy circles where just like or nothing grows or just flowers grow there things like that like how what why i want to know more that inspires me yeah. you should check out definitely the the giant's causeway in ireland i'd love to see you do a video about that yeah it's uh on one of the list <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I have a better a question. If you're interested in, um, if you're interested in Irish history, um, her name is Tara Tyne. Um, mm. She's got a YouTube channel where she also does like daily vlogs um, called Diary of a Ditch Witch, but she does a lot of history of Ireland. Okay. And mythology and stuff. So check her out. That's really cool. Yeah, I I uh, sometimes have contact with Anthony Murphy from Mythical Ireland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I uh, bought his calendar last year and I uh, used some of his footage and a couple photos that he took from like the burial mound of Noth. And yeah, I'm, I, I think I want to do like a myth video about Ireland plus the megalithic artwork at Noth. And he's yeah. like really knowledgeable about it. So I think that I'll probably use that in like collaboration with him. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about starting their own vlog? Don't think that you can't do it. Because my God, I could have started like a decade ago without a doubt and yeah. every time I thought about it I was like eh, yeah no I'm not good enough I'm not pretty enough I'm not smart enough I don't have more enough time it was always these stacks of excuses in my brain of why I couldn't and eventually I got to a point of I have nothing to lose at this point in life so if I don't do it now, I will never do it. So I did it. Mm -hmm. And now a year and a half later, I'm beyond happy that I did. Yeah. So never think that you can't do something because you can do everything you want. So get your camera or your phone. I started filming with a phone. I had no lights. I had no setup. Just do it. Your first video, you'll probably hate and probably delete. And that's okay. But do it. Start now because, you know, You'd rather start early and delete stuff than not start at all. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, finally, what do you think has been the most rewarding part of this whole online process for you? The most rewarding part is that people online come to me and they tell me I taught that I taught them something. I showed them something that they either did not know about or didn't know much about. And the fact that my passion is teaching someone something about our ancient past, mm -hmm. that's it. That's everything I want. Because to me, that's inherently good, sharing knowledge. Yeah. Just like the ancient people would like share knowledge around the campfire, we just do it on YouTube. Yeah. But the knowledge needs to be spread. Yeah. 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 You're, you're giving something to somebody that they otherwise wouldn't have had. So I think that's a, a very good thing. Yeah. To do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And well, what for hey, you, like how, what, what's your favorite rewarding thing about doing your YouTube journey? Because you've switched your content a bit because it used to be like um, a lot of Celine Dion and then it became a lot of Egypt. <laughs> and then now it's because you, uh, moved to Italy and you've married you've been married now like yeah. congratulations by the way <laughs> thank you <laughs> but what what is the most rewarding thing for you now you know I I did do I I don't like to put myself into a box with making videos and content and things like that yeah. um so like the Celine stuff I was very um very lucky that they gave me a chance um to actually release these documentaries and then when I released the first one I was given the chance to actually present the documentary um, to Salim so yeah. you know that was a something rewarding as well but um, and I actually got an email the other day from somebody I'm not going to say who or what it's about mm. but it's about the fact that Salim recommended to somebody to go and watch the documentaries that we had done together and I was like, wow. So it wasn't just, okay, here's a little 15 year old making videos. Oh, we'll, whatever. She still thinks about those films. Yeah. Um, so that's always special for me. You know, I've done the Eurovision stuff. I, I'm always going to be doing Egypt documentaries because I'm constantly working on them. You're working on the new one with me as well. Yes. Um, I'm filming something with Cara on Wednesday. I've got a 
whole bunch of other guests who are in it as well. Um, and, you know, now the vlogs as well. Another friend of mine, Stephanie, uh, inspired me to do vlogs because I did have some bad experiences with the, when I did the three Celine documentaries, I did get some, some really bad, like emails and messages and things like that. People trying to, you know, hack yeah. the system. Yeah. And that sort of stopped me from sharing personal life. Yeah. Um, you know, like when someone could message you and say, I know you're going to be at this hotel at this time in this city. That's, yeah, that's scary. Um, that's, that's when it was like, I'm not sharing personal life. Yeah. But now with Stephanie, that's inspired me to share, you know, personal life. Plus, little... plus you're in control of what you share now. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, I am. Um, at the age of 15. We had like a, a Dutch, um, it's so, it was a sort of Facebook, it was like hives and there were fake accounts made with using my pictures and they would like add my friends and they would make these weird narratives. Mm -hmm. And after that, I did make Facebook, but I was like untraceable on Facebook. If you like typed my complete name in Facebook, you would not find me. Yeah. You could only find me through a friend and then even when you found me, you couldn't send me a friend request because yeah. I was completely scared by that. Yeah. So for like at least 10 or 12 years, I was like a nobody on the internet. I, I have cats. So like <laughs> I have an Instagram and that had like a thousand cat pictures. I'm not even joking. It has more than a thousand cat pictures. And my profile picture everywhere was like a cat. And then, yeah, I think late 2019, early 2020, I was done with like not existing online. And I started to like take a selfie a day because I didn't like the way I looked. So I started to do that to ch change the narrative of how I see myself and how I perceive myself. So that was a challenge. One selfie a day. I didn't do it daily, but often enough. <laughs> and then I started posting them on Instagram and like people were really nice about it. And I was like, okay, so probably the the image that i have of myself isn't right mm -hmm. so now a year and a half later yeah that self image has changed a lot plus i look at my face a lot when i'm editing yeah wow. <laughs> i wish i didn't need to do voice. that oh my god i wish yeah. i didn't need to do that but yeah you because i'm being confronted with myself so much i now see myself as just another human yeah. instead of being overly critical of everything I do or yeah mm -hmm. I'm just human I, I look weird and silly I make funny faces when I talk it's really annoying but like <laughs> it's just what it is that's what we all do we yeah. all do that you know like exactly. I'm, I'm looking at myself in the screen now I've got this eyebrow that doesn't want to go through, so when you look at I yourself do? you get so overly critical but mm -hmm. it does help you just see yourself as human. Like people hate their own voices when you hear them. Oh, yeah. Go edit a video and do that like once a week for over a year. Eventually it's just a voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mine. But, and in my head, I sound really different, but it's just <laughs> a voice. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then you start training your voice to speak better on camera. So you know, okay, yeah. it will sound better if I talk like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly thinking happy thoughts really helps. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. your voice, your, your tone goes higher. Plus, in English, I speak in a higher tone. My sister can probably say yes or no about this. But in, uh, in Dutch, I speak lower, naturally. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just watching Bethany's new series. Um, I do the same. See? <laughs> she says, I do the same. In Dutch, you just... Plus, the G sound, when you do a lower voice, yeah. is a lot easier and a lot less destructive for your vocal cords than when you would do them in the high pitch. So yeah, for sure. in, in Nederlands, it's clink clown show. It's yeah. not sexy. Like in, in English, it's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching Bethany Hughes' new series the other day. Um, and usually she, she has a very specific way of speaking. Yeah. Where you, you've seen her documentaries, you know, she tells the story, she's really immersed in it yeah and on this one I was like well what are you doing different because she sounds so happy all of a sudden 
she probably is very happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She can travel, so she's happy. <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> but to, to go back and answer your question, what has been the best rewarding part of this whole online thing is meeting some amazing people, um, making a lot of new friendships. And also when I get the comment from someone who says, wow, I really enjoyed that. This helped me with whatever. That's, yeah. that's what I like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I shared this thing from um, Robin Williams earlier this mm -hmm. week or last week on Twitter. I Twitter, I tweet a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. But um, I, I'll, I'll look it up real quick because it was so beautiful. Just like Robin Williams, it's, he's my idol. He was so amazing growing up, watching him in, in his movies. Such an amazing soul. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, just load. Work along. If we can do this real quick. <laughs> do what I want. Let me see. I tweet way too much. Stop this. Okay, I, I have this. I don't know how much value I have in this universe, but I do know that if I made a few people happier than they would have been without me, but I do know that I've made a few people happier than they would have been without me. I'm as rich as I ever need to be. So like every person in your life, you will touch other people's lives. And knowing that their lives have become even slightly better than they would have been without you, that's all you need to know in life. Yeah, that's a very yeah. good lesson indeed. And I have felt it like really up close in the past couple of weeks. We, um, we lost our grandma yeah. less than three weeks ago. And I um, stayed with my grandpa for a night because we had a special ceremony. And when I entered the home, there were more than 100 cards scattered through his living room from all these people that were touched by the life of my grandma. Yeah. Yeah. That to me showed that even like my grandma was a very soft-spoken woman. She never stood on the foreground, always in the background, always taking care of other people. But she made a difference. She made a difference and she made such a difference and she touched so many lives that these people felt compelled to send cards to my grandpa to let him know that they felt her love. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's everything you want in life. Exactly. You want to be loved and you want to share that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kaylee, thank you so much. This has been so, so much fun. Yes. Hearing your stories and just chatting with you. I think yeah. we should do it more. <laughs> we should. <laughs> we will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before Definitely. we end and we take some questions from the audience, yes. I have some quick fire questions for you. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Favorite okay. artifact? The mace heads at Noth. They were carved out of stone and they are incredible. Just look them up, mace head Noth. Perfect. Favorite yes. queen? Hatshepsut. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Greece or Egypt? Egypt. That's <laughs> not even a question. <laughs> I mean, I like Greece, but like Egypt, it tops everything. Yeah. yeah. Singing or acting? Singing. Pyramids Definitely. or temples? Ooh. Oh. That's difficult. Oh, I'm going to say pyramids, but I do love the temples like Karnak. Oh, okay. Okay. Pyramids. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's the only question you've answered wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I did so good. <laughs> <laughs> Proudest moment in your life. This channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah the way uh, this is going and the fact that I've built this from scratch, it's all me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Katie, that was so much fun. Thank you. I'm gonna <laughs> open up to the audience to yes. uh, ask some questions. So whoever unmutes can go the fastest. Go, 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 go. Not all at once. <laughs> 
got a question. <laughs> I'll be first again. I'm beating up <laughs> these days. <laughs> you were saying that it takes you three days, more or less, to produce your videos. I just wondered how much research you do beforehand. These are the, the, the most simple videos to make. They can take three days. Then the research for that will take like a day and a half. And the other day and a half is like the filming and editing. Yeah. So like um, I have a video coming out in like 20 minutes. It's a world premiere in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's about the, uh, the invention of the lock and key system. There's, there's not that much you can find about it. So it's a short video. It's simple. I actually feel, uh, made that in two days because it was research, write, okay, go film edit done it's a sponsorship so it took longer in the end because the sponsorship the sponsor needed to like approve which is why it took a total of five days but yeah not much information means quick video not much time yeah yeah, yeah. next question do the stone circles one hmm what was when that? are you going to re redo the Stone Circles video? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. If I, uh, sorry, it cut out just, just a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> We're talking about the Stone Circles video. Yeah. When are you going to redo it? When I will visit them or redo the video? Redo the video. I'll redo the video. I will probably redo that late November. Okay. because I've been wanting to do it for a while now. And like, I've got the script. I just need to like probably add in a couple things, change a few things, and then it's already done. It's just filming and editing. Oh, so look. yeah, I'm late November. I'm expecting. Yeah. I'll look forward to that. Happy to hear. <laughs> Next question. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Hi. Osset. I sent it. I sent his babysitting. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at it, sleeve. Really oh. cute. Yes. I enjoyed your interview so much, and I just wanted to know um, when you plan to go back to Egypt, and when you do, what um, part of history do you and project do you want to be putting together while you're there? I hope to be able to go back next year or the year after that, but preferably 22. Um, I definitely want to visit Luxor and like the Valley of the Kings, but also the temples, the Luxor temple and the Karnak temple. I think that I would like, I would like to do a small documentary about life and death in Luxor and how that one city or like one place area in Egypt holds both. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> if only you knew of, of someone, an Egyptologist who also makes films that could help you with that. If know. only. <laughs> well, Curtis, we might need to plan a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Next, next question, if there is one. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. <laughs> Hi, um, Kaylee. Um, yeah, I really enjoy your your vlogs. Um, thanks for for that and keeping us uh, enlightened, and uh, it's great. Um, but I wanted to ask you, where where else have you travelled in this world? Huh, good question. Um, I've been to Belgium. Yeah, and I've been across the border of Germany and uh, and Egypt. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I need to travel. I, I really need to travel with my life. And uh, yeah, now I have the freedom to do so. So I will definitely be traveling. Yeah, you I'm need planning. to get to uh, definitely get to Luxor. You will love it. Yeah, I am planning a, a visit with my sister in Sweden. I am planning a visit in November to England to a friend of mine in Devon, okay. which is like the prettiest part of the entirety of England. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely want to do that. And uh, yeah, beyond that, I'm not yet sure where I will travel, but I'm definitely going to see more of the world. Yeah. You must. Good. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna allow for one more question if we have another question from the the audience. Yeah, I've got another one. Okay. <laughs> Again, you said history was your second best course. Yes. I just wondered what was your first. English. Cool. I was asked not to come to class because I kept uh, telling the teacher how it's spoken. <laughs> so they asked me to only come in and take the tests and beyond that, just have that hour to myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gotten below an A plus on like an English test, so. Well, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. Keep it up. <laughs> I will. I'm actually like planning to do a Cambridge certificate, so that I uh, I have something to show for it. Like I'm really good at English. Look. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Kate, yes. for sharing your stories with us. It was um, fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. I'm sure we will we all chat soon again. Definitely, because we, uh, we have a collaboration <laughs> in the works. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, until then, everybody go and check out History with Kaylee on YouTube. Go and subscribe. Um, subscribe to to both of us and then yeah. you know when both of us have stuff out exactly click that bell so you know when we upload exactly. it's easy exactly yeah well everyone enjoy the rest of your evening bye bye, bye. <laughs> nice meeting you thank you bye, bye. bye everyone. ciao